Good morning. Just see some children coming in. I want to make sure they know where to go and what's, what we're doing this morning. Welcome to St. Thomas on this very special day in the church calendar where we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. Now, Ascension Day, um, I'm going to tell you about it in a sermon, but there's something mysterious and mystical about Jesus being lifted up today that we're going to really um, enjoy. And it is in preparation for next week, which is Pentecost Sunday. And it's a beautiful, special occasion as well. And to celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, we have a couple of special things to invite you to do. One is to wear red, or bring something red to wave if you want. And uh, I think that has been done over the years, and a few of my uh, friends in their churches are all doing it. So if you want to wear red, please feel free to wear red, or we'll have something that you can, uh, can, can wear. Also, uh, to let you know that next Sunday we're going to have very special um, guests come for our music. Uh, Drew and Danielle, they're local Chilliwack uh, musicians, they're recording artists, and they've been here in our service a few times over the last few months, and uh, I've invited them to come and share music so our worship team can have a nice Sunday of receiving and, uh, and being here. So come in here, Danielle and Drew, and invite your friends. Uh, they're a really nice young couple, and uh, hopefully some of their special friends will come too. Also wanted to make you aware that at the back now we have a prayer list where you can sign your prayer requests uh, for Sundays to be read at the um, intercession time. And if you just want to put first name, that's fine. But we would like to have a place where we can pray together uh, for the things that are on your heart, for those who have needs and for those who have died. So that will be there, but it will, the, the paper will be gone about five minutes before the service because we have to get it to the intercessor. So if you have a prayer request, uh, either phone it in or come early and we'll get it on the, the prayer list there. So welcome to this beautiful space. Um, I love to say welcome to Sanctuary in the Sanctuary. It's 150 year old, beautiful building uh, that we enjoy every week as we look to celebrate our 150th anniversary with a picnic to start this summer and then into the fall we'll be having banquets and bishops and all kinds of fun and as we pause here let's uh, enter into a moment of stillness and silence and give thanks for this land on which we pray and serve and love God and each other and that is unseated from the Stolo people with whom we pray for healing and reparation. And also we open our hearts to what the Spirit of God is saying to the church today. stand as you're able. <coughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May God's grace and peace be with you. May God fill our hearts with joy. Join us as we sing verses 1, 3, and 7. Our story is at 5, Jan. One, three, and five. five. And seven. No, one, three, five, and seven. <laughs> one, three, five, and seven. <laughs>
God, holy God, send your promised spirit of revelation and wisdom, so that in the blessed free we may witness to the grace of forgiveness and sing with joy to the one who makes us one. Amen. Gracie and Laura are here if there's any children that would like to go to their class.
Thank you, that was beautiful. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Acts 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Hear what the spirit is saying to us today. Thanks be to God. The Lord reigns and has put on splendid apparel. The Lord is robed in splendor and girded with strength. The Lord has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Again, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. Waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. I'm Ephesians 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come and he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able.
and also, and also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Finish them. Please be seated. Well, we have arrived at the final Sunday of Eastertide before Pentecost. So today, as I mentioned, is Ascension Day. It was actually on Thursday. We're just celebrating it as the closest Sunday today to Ascension. Ascension Day is 40 days after the resurrection just as we start entering Holy Week 40 days after Palm Sunday. Something about that 40 number, I think, we've noticed in scriptures. So from Ascension Day on Thursday to Pentecost is 10 more days, and those include the 50 days of Easter. 50 days. A lot can happen in 50 days, can't it? We've sure been reading about them and, and learning um, all the different things that have been happening in the gospel in these 50 days. According to New Testament scholars, the gospel of Luke and the book of the Acts of the Apostles are both written by the same author, and they follow each other. So the gospel of Luke tells us at the very end, that what we read today, of Jesus' ascent to the Father in heaven, and then the book of Acts actually dovetails right after the author continues the rest of the story. The Gospel of Luke then concludes with a reference to the coming of the promise of the Spirit, and then the book of Acts begins where we will hear about the fulfillment of that promise. The author of Luke is the only one who records the event of the ascension so clearly it is important to him or to her, to them, the writers, to tell us about Jesus' full glorification and lordship with equal authority and honor with the Father. The ascension is a great mystery, as is the resurrection, because these are beyond our understanding of time and space, and yet they truly reveal Jesus' divine nature. 
I wonder if you're old enough to remember the radio program by Paul Harvey, who delivered over 600 episodes of the rest of the story. Anyone hear that out here? Oh yeah, there's a few, good, good. Well, Harvey would tell an interesting, but not well-known story that was worth hearing, and some are still posted on YouTube, actually. And an interesting thing about Harvey's stories that he shared is that at the end of the episode, he offers us some really peculiar fact or something, a great eye-opener that we all kind of go, oh, wow, and that's cool. Um, he always ends the program by saying, and now you know the rest of the story. He fills us in. Well, today's readings tell us a story of the disciples meeting with Jesus and Jesus ascending. And then next week, we will hear the rest of the story from what Jesus says to them as he's leaving. These are 10 days of waiting. I don't really like waiting. Anyone else here not like waiting? Yeah. Um, I'm an ENFJ on the Meyer Briggs, for those that know Meyer Briggs, and the Js do not like to wait. You may have noticed. I like to kind of get things done and keep things moving. But I need to practice waiting. And yet, of course, waiting is good. We know waiting can be so good, so hard, but so powerful in our lives. Something happens in the waiting. Our music team knows the importance of this because a good pause makes a good song. My granddaughter, Evelyn, at five years old, seems to know this too. She's taking beginner piano lessons. She did a private mini concert for me recently where she was playing a lovely made up song for Grammy. And then suddenly she paused in the middle of the song and she looked over at me and in that sudden moment, she used that modern day phrase, maybe you've heard it, wait for it. Then she pounded the keys for dramatic ending. Wait for it. In the gospel stories, there are quite a few times of waiting for it. Sometimes we wait in anticipation, like in Advent. Sometimes we wait in some sorrow, as in Holy Week. Sometimes we wait in wondering, what is this Holy Spirit that is to come? Much of the Christian life is done in waiting. Perhaps you're waiting in anticipation. Or maybe you're waiting in sorrow. Or maybe you're waiting in wondering for something in your life. All are good, even if they're, they can be hard. And today we hear the very, very final words of Jesus that are recorded in Luke. Stay here until you have been clothed with power from on high. Wait for it. We are once again listening to the important messages given in final words. Uh, last week, and I might need to apologize for this, I shared with you that my dying friend Kay shared a special message to me, a gift of God through her to my heart when she had one foot on earth and one foot in heaven. You know that sacred liminal space. And after the service, one person asked me, did you tell us those last six words that she said to you? Did I miss them? Was I not a good listener? I wondered... I forgot to tell you the rest of the story. But I reassured her that indeed, she had listened well and I had not shared the last words. And I had shared with her that I did not want to share them with you. I wanted to invite you to listen to what you were hearing from the Spirit from God for you, from those that you love before they go, or from Jesus in these last words before he is taken to heaven. Last week, Jesus' last words were, I will love you and reveal myself to you. What precious last words. 
And then we continue today as we wait and listen to his words of love. Today we see Jesus' love poured out to his friends in these final moments, and there is a great revealing. In this we see the unfolding of the rest of the story. So I invite you to continue to listen to the last words of those you love and of Jesus. Imagine the scene of Jesus blessing his friends, possibly like sharing intimate final words. I don't know what he might be saying to them. Like, I remember that, or you're gonna do this, or who knows, he had special thoughts with them. And he, he probably laid his hands upon them like he did when he blessed the children. Then, with an assurance that he will come again, he tells them, is lifted up into the clouds right before their eyes. How did they respond to this leaving? Well, they worshiped him. They were filled with great joy and they went about continually blessing God. I wonder what is happening in these 40 days of Easter and at this time of ascension that Jesus' friends and followers are now filled with joy at his departure. It's not like the last time when he left and they were filled with despair at a, at a cross and an empty tomb. They were devastated. Something happened for them. Perhaps in the experience of Jesus having left when he died and knowing that he did come back, they were able to trust him more when they hear about the Father's promise that I will send another, that they will not be left. They had spent more time with Jesus in these 40 days, and in this time, perhaps they had come to know him even more. Their sorrows and fears have been met with love and hope. And in this time, that they spent with Jesus, he opened their minds to understand. He revealed to them that what had been written about him in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms had to be fulfilled, and that they were witnesses to this great revealing. They were witnesses to the fulfillment of the Messiah's suffering, dying, and rising, and that now all can see God's love and forgiveness that is for all people and nations. And they did see heavens opened up. And I wonder if perhaps they were so excited at the news also that they would be clothed with this Holy Spirit and given power to do these works. Perhaps they thought, this story keeps getting better all the time. And we are not only witnesses now, we are being invited into this glorious story. We can hear this great joy that was also known by Paul as he prays for the Ephesian church. He prays confidently because he knows the rest of the story and he is living it. He prays for the Ephesians and let us pray for our church at St. Thomas this morning in Chilliwack. Let us pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation as we come to know him, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know what is the hope to which he has called us and the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. A power of humility, a power of sharing the love of God. May it be so.
as you are able. No. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only, his only Son, Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand, sit, or kneel, as is your most comfortable place for prayer. The response this morning is, we look to you. United in the company of all faithful and looking for the coming of the Holy Spirit, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. You bring your chosen people together in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We rejoice in your light and your peace with your whole church in heaven and on earth. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Loving God, we look to you. Bless John, our bishop, Lori, our priest, and all ministers of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple of the Lord. We pray for all the people that we encounter in our daily lives. Help us to recognize Christ in one another, however stressed and tired they may be. We ask that you help us to recognize the risen Christ in the face of someone we meet today and give us an opportunity to brighten their day with a smile or word. Loving God, we look to you. Jesus remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbors. Thank you for our families, friends, and fellow Christians, and with the people with whom we work or share our daily lives. We pray for those who are lonely or isolated because of age or ill health. Loving God, we look to you. Thank you that you are our protector and provider you have said that when we call on you in prayer, you will listen to us. Hear our prayer for the growth of your church. May we see people respond to you in repentance and faith. We may work and labor, but it is you who gives growth. Loving God, we look to you. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above. Help us to be constantly aware of their needs and problems. Give the leaders of the world the courage to oppose sin and tyranny, that there may be greater unity among nations seeking to halt the threat of war and terrorism, and that the common good of all humanity is served by their decisions and actions. Loving God, we look to you. We remember this morning those who are sick, sad, or lonely, and those who are brave and patient when things are going wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. This morning we pray for Bev, for Jim, and for Kathy. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all those who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Loving God, we raise before you all who have died and who are now with your ascended son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who have recently died and for their resurrection into your kingdom. We remember Noreen, Simeon and family, and Raymond. Preserve in your faith your servants on earth, guide us to your kingdom, and grant us your peace at all times. Loving God, we look to you.
We give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayer and praises. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. The peace with one another. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. Glory to you. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. 
but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine said the blessing and gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer you ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread, and share in the life of the family of your children. be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. break this bread to share in the body of Christ. If we have, we have died, died with, with him, him, we, we shall, shall live with, with him. him. If, if we, we hold firm, we, we shall reign with him. him. Let us also pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in, in heaven, hallowed heaven, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have regular bread and gluten-free if you need, and please feel free to drink from the chalice of wine or just touch if that's better for you. would rocks cry out to worship, whose glory taught the stars to shine. Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing, but this joy is Magnify your 
Let us pray, life-giving God. In the, in the mystery, mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, so that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Together, let us proclaim the doxology. Glory, Glory to God, God, whose power working in us can, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to, to God from generation to generation, generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, Jesus forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And may you receive this blessing that out of the fullness of Christ, you will be blessed with the depth of this love and revelation, and that you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit to do what is yours to do in this world. We ask and bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.